Anna couldn't sleep all night because she was very excited. Early in the morning, her father called her and said, Come on Anna, it's time to get up. We have a long way to go to reach the train station. Anna quickly got dressed and was soon ready, but she didn't eat any breakfast. She was feeling nervous because she was going to visit her aunt in Naira, and it would be her first time travelling alone on a train. Anna and her father left the village and started walking towards the train station. It was a long journey, but they finally reached the station at midday. When the train arrived, Anna noticed that it was nearly empty. She got on board, feeling frightened because it was her first time being away from home. Her father told her to be careful and not to talk to any strangers on the train. Suddenly, the train started moving and picked up speed. Anna watched her father from the window as he became smaller and smaller until he disappeared from sight. The train journey felt very long, and Anna kept looking out of the window to see the fields, trees, villages, and animals rushing past. Her father had assured her that her aunt would meet her at Nara, and he reminded her again to be careful and not to talk to strangers. After a while, Anna started feeling sleepy because she was very tired. Eventually, she fell asleep. When she woke up, it was dark outside, and she felt small and lost. She realized she was far away from her village and her father. There was a man in the train carriage with her. He had an unpleasant face and was big and strong. His hair was very short, and he seemed like a bad and dangerous person. The man smiled at Anna and greeted her, asking where she was going. Remembering her father's advice, Anna chose not to say anything. The man then asked if she was going to Polona. Anna was surprised and replied, No, Nera. The man informed her that they had already passed Nara two hours ago while she was asleep. Anna felt like crying. She sat very still in the carriage, feeling warm but also cold inside. Realizing that she had missed her stop, Anna wondered how she would get back to Nera. She didn't have any money for another ticket. Anna thought about her aunt waiting at the Nara station. Feeling worried, she hesitated. But Sam, the man in the carriage, reassured her, saying he would help her and asked for her name. Anna cautiously replied, Anna. Sam introduced himself as Sam and insisted that she could trust him. As Anna looked at Sam again, she noticed his unattractive appearance and the long scar on his face, which made him appear dangerous. However, there was something about him that seemed kind. Anna couldn't determine if he was good or bad. The train started to slow down, and Sam got up to look out of the window. Anna noticed a newspaper left on Sam's seat. Curiosity got the better of her, and she glanced at the back page, where she saw a photograph. To her shock, it was Sam's picture. Above the photograph, there was a headline that read, This man is a dangerous fighter. Now Anna was certain that Sam was not only an ugly man but also a dangerous criminal. She knew she had to be extremely cautious and find a way to escape from him as soon as possible. As Sam turned away from the window, he announced that they were approaching Polona. He urged Anna to stay with him, promising to assist her. When the train finally stopped, Anna's instinct kicked in, and she quickly jumped up and ran towards the door. She desperately wanted to flee from Sam. However, to her dismay, the door turned out to be heavy, posing an obstacle to her escape. Anna struggled to open the door, and Sam, who was standing behind her, offered to help. He assured her that he would open it for her. However, when Anna reached the station exit, she was stopped by someone asking for her ticket. She explained that her ticket was for Nara, but she had fallen asleep and missed her stop. She didn't have any money for a new ticket. Unexpectedly, Sam intervened and offered to pay for her ticket. Anna thanked him, feeling unsure about what to do. She reluctantly followed Sam, feeling afraid of him but also feeling tired and lost. Polona, the place they had arrived at, was a big town, and Anna didn't know anyone there. Sam called a taxi, instructing Anna to get in. He told the driver to take them to the Boxer Hotel. The taxi ride was long, and Anna observed the wide and busy streets of Polona filled with cars, shops, and people. Eventually, the taxi turned into a small, dimly lit street and came to a stop. Sam got out of the taxi and paid the fare. The taxi driver watched as Anna hesitated on the street, 
but she had no choice but to follow Sam. She felt weak and slow, while Sam was large and strong. They entered the hotel together. Inside, there was a cafe that didn't appear very clean. Two men were present, drinking and playing cards. When they saw Sam, one of them greeted him and remarked on Anna's presence, calling her pretty girl. Sam took off his coat and joined the men, introducing Anna as a lost girl. The men looked at Anna and laughed, with Tino remarking on her being lost. They pitied her and considered Sam fortunate to have her company. They insisted that Sam have a drink with them. Sam found a chair for Anna, and she sat down, observing the men closely. Tino had a moustache, while Bob was missing his front teeth. They had a rough appearance. The men continued drinking, and Tino offered Anna a glass, urging her to drink some wine. Anna pushed the glass away, refusing to drink. Anna's mind raced with worry as she thought, I mustn't eat or drink anything they give me. These men might drug me, and then I'll fall asleep. Sam called the waiter and ordered dinner, specifically requesting good hot food. The waiter brought the food, and Bob portioned some onto a plate for Anna. The food looked appetizing and smelled delicious, causing Anna to forget about her suspicions of drugs. She quickly ate everything on her plate and put her spoon down. The men observed her and laughed, making Anna feel extremely frightened. Sam urged her again, saying, Come on, Anna. You're tired. You must go to bed. He took hold of her arm and escorted her upstairs, emphasizing the need to lock her doors due to the presence of bad men in Polona. Tino bid her good night and left. Sam accompanied Anna into a bedroom, and her heart raced with fear. He bid her good night, assuring her that she was safe in the room. Anna remained silent, conflicted by Sam's seemingly kind demeanor but reminded of the newspaper's warning about his dangerous nature and the menacing appearance of his friends. Determined to escape, she knew she had to find a way. As Sam left the room and locked the door behind him, Anna sat on the bed and cried. Downstairs, the men continued drinking and playing cards, their voices audible to Anna, further adding to her knees. They were laughing, and eventually, Anna fell asleep after a long time. When she woke up, the sun was shining, and she looked out of the window to see the waiter sitting outside on the street, smoking a cigarette and reading a newspaper. Anna surveyed the room she was in and noticed its dirtiness, with old papers scattered on the floor. In one corner, there was a small table with some items on it. An idea sparked in Anna's mind. She noticed a pen, biro, on the table and picked it up along with a piece of paper from the floor. She wrote a plea for help, expressing her desire to go to Nara where her aunt was waiting for her. She mentioned her need to escape from her current situation, explaining that she had no money or friends. Signing the note as Anna she threw it out of the window, hoping someone would find it and assist her. The waiter outside noticed the note, picked it up, and read its contents. He looked up and made eye contact with Anna. He smiled at her and went back into the hotel. Anna heard voices outside her room and the sound of someone unlocking the door. She assumed it must be a policeman as she had hoped, brought by the waiter. Anna rushed forward with anticipation. However, to her surprise, it was Sam who entered the room, holding her note in his hand. Good afternoon, Anna Sam greeted her. You've slept very late. You must be hungry. Come and have some food, Sam said to Anna. He suggested that they would be leaving soon. The waiter smiled at Sam, confirming Anna's suspicion that they were friends and not willing to help her. Anna reluctantly followed Sam downstairs, where they were served food. However, she had no appetite and refused to eat or drink anything. Sam stepped outside and engaged in conversation with another man. Anna listened attentively, wondering what they were planning. After a while, Sam returned inside and urged Anna to hurry, stating that they needed to leave immediately. A waiting taxi was outside. Anna hesitantly entered the taxi with Sam and asked where they were going. Sam looked at her and replied, I'll take you to your aunt later. First, I have an important job to do. He smiled, but the smile distorted his face, making him appear extremely unpleasant. The taxi eventually came to a stop, 
and Sam and Anna got out. They found themselves in front of a large building with a notice posted outside that read, Music. Today at 3 o'clock. Sam the fighter versus Danny. Anna realized that Sam was a boxer, not a criminal. Being described as a dangerous fighter meant that he was skilled in the ring. She followed Sam into the large hall, which had seats arranged on all sides and a boxing ring in the center. Tino and Bobs were already there, waiting for them. Stay here, Anna Sam instructed. Tino and Bobs will look after you. I must go now. Tino and Bobs shook Sam's hand, wishing him luck. Bobs said confidently, you'll win, Sam. All right, Tino. Anna mustered a smile and wished Sam good luck for the first time. Tino and Bobs guided Anna to a seat beside the ring, with Tino sitting on one side and Bobs on the other. Anna sat quietly, waiting in anticipation. Meanwhile, the two men engaged in excited conversation, expressing their confidence in Sam's victory. Sam's going to win, Tino declared. Bobs agreed, stating, of course, he'll win. He's the best fighter in the country. Anna listened intently, realizing that Sam was famous, and it seemed that everyone wanted him to win. Tino affirmed, everybody likes him. Bugs is right, Tino continued. Sam is not only a great boxer, but he's also a good man. Let me tell you a story about Sam. One night, while he was asleep in bed, he heard shouts coming from the street. He looked outside and saw that a house was on fire. Without hesitation, he ran outside. Tino paused for a moment, emphasizing the heroism of Sam's actions. There was a child trapped inside the burning house. Sam didn't think twice. He bravely went inside and rescued the child, but in the process, he suffered severe injuries. His face was burned, and he was left with a scar. Bob's expressed sympathy for Sam, saying, poor Sam. That's why he's considered ugly. They shared a moment of laughter, understanding the underlying strength and courage behind Sam's appearance. Anna listened attentively, comprehending the whole picture. She realized that she was safe with Sam and felt a sense of compassion towards him. Anna turned to Tino and asked, is the fight going to start soon? Tino replied with certainty, yes, of course. It will start very soon. The hall was filled with people, and vendors were selling cigarettes and sweets. Laughter and jokes echoed throughout the crowd. The referee stood in the ring, waiting for the event to commence. The audience grew more and more excited, chanting, Sam. Sam. We want Sam. In response to their cheers, Sam climbed into the ring, ready for the fight to begin. Sam entered the ring wearing short trousers and big boxing gloves. As he raised both hands in the air, the crowd erupted in applause, chanting his name, Sam. 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 Meanwhile, the other fighter, Danny, climbed into the ring. He was notably big and strong, prompting Tino to introduce him, saying, here comes Danny. He's a very good fighter. Anna felt a sense of worry, but Bubs reassured her, saying, don't you worry, Anna. Sam is the best fighter in the country. The referee called both boxers to the center of the ring, speaking to them quietly for a few moments. Sam and Danny shook hands before returning to their corners to await the start of the fight. As the bell rang, signaling the beginning of the match, Danny, being younger, moved swiftly and attempted to land punches on Sam. However, Sam skillfully evaded each blow, utilizing his long arms and quick movements. He delivered powerful hits to Danny multiple times, much to Anna's excitement. She held onto her seat tightly, fully engrossed in the intense battle unfolding before her. The fight continued for a long time, with Sam displaying his agility and landing several hits on Danny. Despite the relentless onslaught, Danny managed to stay on his feet, refusing to be knocked down. However, Sam's energy was waning, and his movements became slower. Anna grew increasingly worried, and amidst the crowd's chants of Sam. Sam, she shouted, come on, Sam. Watch out. Tino and Bubs joined in, 
shouting their encouragement as well. Suddenly, Danny landed a powerful blow to Sam's face, causing blood to flow from his nose. The sight stirred a mix of concern and determination in Anna's heart. And one of his eyes was nearly closed Sam continued to fight despite his injuries. He charged forward, channeling all his strength into a final blow against Danny. The impact was powerful, causing Danny to fall to the ground and lie motionless. The referee began the count, and as the numbers were called out, Danny struggled to get up but ultimately failed. The count reached 10, and the fight was over. The crowd erupted in cheers and applause, chanting Sam's name with fervor. Anna joined in, laughing and clapping, expressing her admiration for Sam's victory. However, her voice got lost in the sea of excitement as everyone shouted, We want Sam. Tino and Bubs escorted Anna to the dressing room where Sam was resting. When Anna greeted him, Sam seemed taken aback. Hello, Anna he replied. You're different. You didn't talk to me before. Anna expressed her remorse, acknowledging her initial fear and misunderstanding. I'm sorry, Sam she said. I was frightened. Sam, understanding her perspective, responded, I know. I'm big and ugly, and you were frightened. But I'm not a criminal, Anna. I'm sorry, too. Anna repeated her apology, admitting her mistake. I was wrong, Sam, she said sincerely. Sam smiled and reassured her, it's all right, Anna. We all make mistakes. The important thing is that we understand now. Anna nodded, feeling a sense of relief and gratitude. She realized that her judgment had been clouded by preconceived notions, and she was grateful for the opportunity to see the truth about Sam. Not feeling frightened anymore, Anna and Sam embarked on their journey to Nara. They bid farewell to Tino and Bubs, expressing their gratitude, and hopped into a taxi together. The ride was long, and during the journey, Anna filled Sam with numerous questions. They engaged in conversation, talking and talking, gradually building a deeper connection. By the time they arrived in Nara, it was already nighttime, and darkness enveloped the surroundings. Sam, familiar with the area, quickly led Anna to her aunt's house. They stood in front of the door and knocked. As the door opened, Anna's aunt appeared, tears streaming down her face. Oh, Anna, Anna, her aunt exclaimed, relieved beyond measure. Thank God you're finally here. However, upon noticing Sam's battered and bruised face, she grew concerned. Who is this man? she asked. Anna, understanding her aunt's worry, reassured her. Auntie Anna, please don't be angry. This is Sam, she explained. I fell asleep on the train and missed Nara station. Sam helped me. He took care of me at a hotel and brought me here in a taxi. Anna's aunt scrutinized Sam once again, her curiosity piqued. Wait a minute, she said, and quickly retreated inside the house, presumably to gather her thoughts or perhaps verify the information. Anna's aunt returned with a newspaper in hand, and to her surprise, she found Sam's photograph on the back page. Are you Sam the boxer? she inquired. Sam confirmed her suspicion, yes, I am, he replied. Anna's aunt was delighted. Sam was a renowned figure, known and admired by many. She invited him inside, offering him a seat and a cup of tea. Anna sat quietly in the room, feeling a profound sense of happiness. She observed her aunt and Sam engaging in conversation, with her aunt asking Sam numerous questions and sharing laughter together. It was evident that her aunt liked him. As the hour grew late, Sam expressed that he needed to depart. I must go now, he said to Anna. But before leaving, he asked if he could visit her again. Anna's response was filled with warmth. Yes, Sam, she replied with a smile. Sam bid farewell to Anna and her aunt, with the promise of returning in the future. 